Oh, see now there you can't see nothing in the dark in there. See, well, gee, look at all those reflectors. Phew. Well, are they showing up on there? Okay, yeah. now I guess maybe I'll turn my reflectors off. There they are. There are the rig sets. But you can see those reflectors a quarter mile away. We're over here, and we've been to show you our wraparounds that we've been building for quite a long time, and we sell them the customers by order. They come in and they request us to build them one, and we build them one. Okay, now they're designed to where they totally protect the unit all the way around. And this is kind of neat here. Then we engineer the wraparound so it fits over top of the fenders. So the belding that gets on here protects the fender. So if it hits something, it's like it breaks and they ain't tearing nothing loose. And then it goes down here to the bottom to where the mud would like to fly in and get on the operator. That's all sealed up there. Comes up to the front side here, holding this back. Holds it down so nothing can push it up. We got handholds on them. If you need to get stuck and you need to pull it out. Also one up here in the front. You can grab a hold and pull it out one way or the other, whichever way you gotta go. That's kind of nice to have handholds. Then he goes on around the back. We even did this. We went as far to really put some effort into these mud flaps. Instead of having a piece of flat iron back here or something. So if you went walking by the thing and you, you forgot about it and you caught this big mud flap so it wouldn't jab in the leg. We engineered a mud flap carrier that hits it, it's nice and round and it comes around here so you won't get stuffed. Oh Jesus, the Cowboys, they really like that. See how neat that was, you flop by it and don't even know you flopped. Okay, now the thing is engineered in two halves. One half is on one side, one half is on the other. And the last thing you want to do is weld this together. If you had to work on the machine for some reason, and you had to get into it to pull some stuff off, and this thing is in your road, you can just undo a few bolts, it sets off, and the other side you just leave on. Okay, then you come on around. Another mud flap over here to protect them. What a lot of the ranchers like about these they can go out and check their cows in the spring when they're calving and stuff. The yards can be sloppy and messy. And they can come in and they ain't all clobbered with all the stuff that's out there in the feedlot or the yard, you know what I'm talking about. They say, hell, they come in clean enough. Should they go have coffee? Do I have to go change clothes? <laughs> okay, then we shoot on up. Same thing over here. Belding in here. And you know what's really crazy? This belding we put on there, that stuff costs three times more than the steel. And the steel was about tripled in price, but that belding just went plum nuts. I can't believe that, but we will still build some. Okay, and then the belding comes on up here. And then up in here is where you have a bolt here and a bolt here that holds this half on to the bumper guard. And then he's also got a holder here, and then he's got a hold down there in the footrest area. And they're, they're real solid. We've had some guys that's had bad luck and lost their rig, and it's, it's actually rolled down the hill a few times. Damage to the machine is nothing, but they raise hell with their handlebars. Okay, and then in the front, it's got a special design bumper. Okay, the bumper's designed so he pushes the material underneath instead of it just driving back in there, tearing up your boots and stuff. And well, we were just talking about how our little wraparounds in our bumper guards and all this stuff is engineered to totally protect the machine rather than hindrance it. Okay, it pushes a lot of your debris and brush down in the front and it gets in in a downward motion so it ain't going up through the machine, getting caught in all your little shields that are down here. If you get down here and see those little shields. These shields has been on there since I got this back in 14. And neither one are damaged at all. We've never put a boot on it. 
and uh, that's more unfortunate because sometimes you can get a piece of twine that gets you in trouble around the tire, but brush is what gets you in a lot of trouble. And see this here kind of gets your brush feeding down and it's starting to go down on an angle and this, then this catches it on an angle and just slides right on through there. Works out really good. And then we put a certain amount of weight on the wraparound, so this weight in the front, it's not much, but it's enough that it's amazing what it does if you're crawling up a hill and you've got another 15 or 20 pounds hanging on the front. You can be sitting on the seat and you think like, holy shit, I thought these things were right over back or easy. Well, don't go nutty and try to crawl straight up a wall, but where you have trouble going up a hill and where you can have problems, this little extra counterweight really holds things down good. Okay, and then off the, besides what else we do to the machine to make them better, we definitely come in here and we change this. We change the rims on these things instantly. We pick on a Rubicon because it was at one time the all-time favorite farm and ranch machine. And it's still going to be that way for years. Okay, special tires, special rims. We widened the foot tint five and a half to six inches. Five and a half in the front and six inches in the back. And these are like a flat face tire. Now you go back over here, and you come down in here and you look, and if the guys are experienced and looking at all their little Hondas, they'll say like, geez, this thing's wider right down in here. I don't know if you can see that down there or not, Benny. But you see, you can kind of see the end of your little stub axle there where you put your tire rod right on. Most of them, you got the rim that's stuck in about here. And another thing I'll show you in the back, Okay, now, on most of them, if you go back here and look, you can see this brake drum. See how that's all exposed? Most of them, you got the rim covering over that. And you almost got the tire rubbing about right in here where my finger's at. And then we change the hitch and stuff on them, too. We've done this to quite a few of them. Okay, for the guys who do a lot of backing up of trailers. And we'll explain that to you here in a little bit. Okay, and then these things here... Here's the Honda slaps, They're just too little. The mud flips up and lands here and the wind blows it on your back. You need a mud flap at least this big and it's gotta be a soft flap. And as they get old, they get a little bit of a rounded corner on them. They fit in, they look good on the machines. I mean, geez, we got all our customers think they're great. So anyway, that's kind of the little highlight of our wrap rounds and our tire and rim package. We had a company that got in gear and build us what we wanted and they, trust me they sold Roy's Honda over 300 sets of these tires and rims it's a special tire it's a tire that's more of a flat face tire instead of a round tire most tires you get them aired up and they got a round ball thing well these here are aired up and they're kind of more flat so I get a wider stance when you're going down the road to hug corners and when we get guys hustling to chase the cow, boy, they want to tear around that corner and get after, and they, they get serious. Well, they're probably old horse riders, and they want to go. But anyway, that's kind of some of the reasons behind this unit set up the way it is. And, okay, that's about the best we can tell you about wrap around. So, later.